Hey, Dan Williams here. Welcome back to Survive Outdoors. And today we're going to be talking about different headgear that you can wear in the outdoors. No. Today we're going to be doing treatment bee and wasp stings. Um, we're going to talk about when you should get treatment, when you should go to the urgent care or emergency room, when do you call 911, uh, what are your chances of getting an anaphylactic reaction, and what you should be carrying in your medical kit in your car or in your backpack. <clears throat> so, the, the order of hymenoptera, hym let me try this again, hym hymenoptera, hymenoptera, say that three times fast. In that order, we have wasps, bees, bumblebees, hornets, and fire ants. So all of those are in that order, and all of those are venomous, um, and they have protein in their venom. So what really what happens is, is when the the insect stings you, it injects protein into your system, and then the immunoglobulin IgE gets alerted and it promotes the release of histamine and when that happens you get this histamine rush and that's when you start getting swelling at the bite side redness and that's when you start having some pain now on an anaphylactic reaction rarely if ever an anaphylactic reaction occurs on the first sting because what happens is the anaphylactic reaction will happen later, usually on the second or third sting. Because the body sits there and basically says, okay, you're getting stung again, enough of this crap. They've stored up enough and they know what's happening and they release a ton of histamine. And that's when you have this very bad reaction called anaphylaxis. So rarely do you get that on the first sting. In fact, I've never seen that on the first sting. If it does happen, usually people either forget or don't remember they had a sting in the past. So, what do you do if you get stung? The first thing you need to do is get away from the area. Because there's a good chance with certain species you can get stung repeatedly. Hornets are like that, and honeybees can be like that. Now there is a species, and I'm sure everybody's heard of it, called Africanized honeybees. And some just wonderful scientist in San Paulo, Brazil in 1977 had a great idea thinking that he would create the most industrious bee and he crossed a domesticated honeybee with an African bee and you have an Africanized honeybee. And over the years they have migrated north and now they're in Texas and Arizona and a lot of the southern states. When these guys sting you they become extremely agitated and they sting in a group. Um, in fact, about, it only takes about 30 of those stings to kill a small child and over 200 to kill an adult. So Africanized honeybees, uh, they're also very irritated with noise, like if you're cutting grass. For the majority of the U.S., though, <clears throat> the honeybee is the issue and yellow jackets are very common. You'll, those are in the fall. You'll see they become more aggressive They'll go around your soda can or if you're eating. Part of the reason they're more aggressive in the fall is because the insect population is dropping and they're hungry and they're pretty aggressive. They're like little terrorists. These guys are amazing as opposed to the honeybee. Now a honeybee, it really does not want to sting you unless it's one depressed suicidal puppy because when it stings you, the majority of times it's going to die. It's going to eviscerate its abdomen and it will die because the stinger remains in. It's, it's got a prong on it, barb, and if you ever watch any videos, you'll see sometimes they try to twirl around and around to get the stinger out. They don't want to die. They don't want to sting you. So, ideally, if you don't freak out, ideally it would be great if you wouldn't slap and kill them. But usually 99% of people, they get stung, they slap themselves, and they kill the bee. So, what happens if you get stung? First thing you do is you're going to move away from the area as quick as you can, which I don't think I have to tell you that, most people run. Um, second thing you want to do is if you get stung on the hands, you want to remove all jewelry. Really important, because if that starts swelling up, then we're going to have to cut off your ring or we're going to have to cut off the jewelry. 
And then ice is really helpful. So ice would be the next step. And Benadryl, uh, which is an, obviously the most common antihistamine, and you're going to use that in pretty well all of the reactions. Now there's three types of reactions you could get. The vast majority of people will have a very minor reaction, which is a little red wheel, a bump, and redness, let's say about the size of a silver dollar, is about the biggest. That is the most mildest reaction, and that's the majority. So Benadryl, and you can take a Pepsin with that. Now, there's histamine 1 receptors and histamine 2. And H2 histamine blockers, I should say, are like um, Pepsin, which is famatidine, and Tagamet, which is cimetidine for stomach acid. Those work great. So in my, in one of the videos, we'll go through this pack, but in my pack, I always carry some diphenhydramine, 25 milligrams. You can get that at the pharmacy. And I carry some Pepsin in here. So ice, Pepsin, um, Benadryl, and you're going to take that at the first uh, instance of a sting. Most of these stings, they resolve in four to five days. That's really not an issue. You really don't need to come in with a local reaction. You can use um, some calamine lotion, which can help with the itching. Personally, I like a steroid cream, um, and that helps also. I haven't had much success with the uh, Benadryl topical. So what is the next phase? The next phase would be an intermediate reaction. And an intermediate reaction is when you get the same as the first. You get the wheel, the redness, but the redness starts to expand over an hour or two hours. And I've seen it 10, 12 inches uh, around the redness on the arm, leg, wherever. So that's an intermediate sting. And that's concerning because that is a marker for what could happen down the road, months, a year or two down the road. Um, if you, the picture coming up you're going to see is an intermediate sting on the gentleman's foot walking through um, some dandelions. He got stung on the foot. So on the inner aspect of the foot, you'll see a real bright red spot. And then you'll see how extensive the redness is on his foot and his uh, lower leg. That's an intermediate sting. And the older you get, you have a higher chance of having an anaphylactic reaction. So on an intermediate sting, you're going to do the Benadryl, the Pepsid, uh, ice. You're going to do all of that, and you're going to observe and watch. And you, at that point, on intermediates, a lot of times those individuals come in because it's getting bigger. Um, and then what we'll do in the clinic is we may prescribe prednisone, which helps tremendously. Now, on an anaphylaxis reaction, there are times that there is a red flag or a precursor that can alert you to that. If that intermediate sting starts getting larger, you have difficult time breathing, or one of the red flags is starting to get systemic hives. Systemic means the entire body. If you start getting hives and wheels all over your body, that can be a red flag that this is going to go towards an anaphylactic reaction. And if that occurs, you need to call 911 or get your butt to the uh, emergency room. So that's really important. Um, and if you have a history of having these situations occur, we have the intermediate. I've written many prescriptions for an EpiPen. If individuals have an intermediate reaction, clearly if they had an anaphylactic, we're going to write that. So... When you get the, uh, if you ever have an EpiPen, it'll come with a trainer pen here. I'm going to come over and show you that's closer. And that's going to show you how to, how to use it. And then on the EpiPen itself, this is important. It's made like this for a reason. Bright orange needle end on this end. Now... Why is that? I actually had a patient come in and he injected himself, but he had it turned this way and he jammed himself in the thigh and the needle went into his thumb into the bone. So there you have that. So what happened was is that he definitely got some epi in him, 
We didn't have to worry about that, but now we had to worry about possible osteomyelitis and bone infection. So make sure when you get your EpiPen, read the instructions, read it, go through the trainer pin. Don't wait until the situation occurs. Please do not do that. Um, really important to go through that pen and understand how it works. There was really, on average, about 60 to 70 deaths per year in the U.S. from bee stings um, and wasp stings. When I say bee stings, I'm including wasps. Um, if you're prepared, if you carry your Benadryl and your Pepsid with you, or Benadryl and Tagamet, um, that helps a bunch. If you don't have ice, do a cool washcloth. Um, like I say, the vast majority of these are very local. You do not need to come into the clinic or the ER. In the future, we're going to do a video specifically on fire ants. And on those, everyone has a reaction to those. Everyone. And we'll talk about that in more detail in a video coming up. In the meantime, keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind, and stay safe, guys.